So uh, I have a couple of thanks. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for staying. <laughs> and, and I'd like to thank the, uh, the one club for making it clear that there'll always be a future for account people. Uh, <clears throat> and now I'm going to show you how great three minutes can really be. <laughs> I, I have worked with two previous Hall of Famers, um, Phil Dusenbury and David Abbott, which by any definition would make me, would make me lucky. Um, but tonight's honoree, David, has been my friend for more than 20 years and my partner, we call each other our work wives, for 13 so far. And that makes me the luckiest man in, in advertising. Um, his impact on creativity in our business is a matter of public record. And if you haven't seen the public record, just go and look at his office. Um, <laughs> that's what he's done. Uh, but I want to focus really on who he is uh, and why, as a true creative leader, I'm so happy that he's getting this recognition tonight. Um, David and I met at a BBDO network meeting in Australia in 1996. He was running BBDO West at the time, and I'd just joined AMV BBDO in London. And I loved his restlessness. I still do. When he was at Fallon, and I was in London, we would meet for lunch whenever he came to London. Uh, and he was always peppering me with questions about what was hot and what was not, and who he should hire and why. And I loved the fact that, unlike many, he didn't think he had all the answers. He still doesn't, and I still love him for that. In 2004, when I became the CEO of BBDO Worldwide, I persuaded him to join me uh, over lunch at Morell's. I arrived late. Uh, my cell phone was dead, and I had to borrow his, and I made a half-hour call to a client. So by the end of that, his cell phone was dead. We ate lunch. I'd forgotten my wallet. He had to pay for lunch. On the way out, I said, I just need to go by to the bathroom. And he said to me, do you need me to take care of that for you as well? <laughs> I loved how he made me laugh, and I love how he still does every single day. Uh, I can be on the other side of the world, we, and he'll send me some goofy email or some completely inappropriate post from Instagram or something like that. Every single day, he makes me laugh. My dad died seven years ago. The following year, on the anniversary of his death, David wrote to my mom, and he still does, every single year. And whenever anybody in our company is going through a tough time, uh, he calls them before he leaves the agency at night, late at night. He cares about our clients, our clients and their businesses, and he calls them late at night before he leaves the agency. He has a really unusual balance of unshakable confidence, which is what you need for those around you to think that they can do something new, and complete paranoia uh, to make sure you never think you're done. Disraeli said that politics is the art of the possible. So is advertising. David is both a purist and a pragmatist, another unusual combination, invaluable in a creative leader. David Lynch once said, ideas are like fish. <clears throat> You can't make a fish, you can only catch a fish. Eight years ago, David, Lubos, not Lynch, was reviewing dozens of scripts for a Snickers Super Bowl commercial. And buried deep in one of those scripts was a sentence, you're not you when you're hungry. He caught it. Eight years on, it is still building that brand's business in 83 countries across the world in every single medium imaginable.
David Luboz knows how to catch fish. He knows how to catch lots of them and really, really, really big ones. David Luboz deserves to be in this Hall of Fame, and this Hall of Fame deserves to have David Luboz. <laughs>